Hi everyone and welcome to part two, the actual build of the PC. Hopefully you've checked out part one first. That's uh, the video where I put together all the parts and explain my reason for buying them and give all their prices. This is the actual build part two. Uh, I've gone into quite a lot of detail, so it is quite long and drawn out, but hopefully there is some useful information in there for you. Let's get part two, the actual build underway. Let's get on with it. So you'll see here on, on the motherboard socket, three of the corners are the same. That one, that one, that one are all the same, they're like a 45 degrees cut off. This one here is slightly different. You'll see there's like a, an arrow embossed on it and the actual holes in the socket are like a square side. That's where the, um, the corresponding arrow on the processor goes. It'll only go that way. So first of all, just pull out that lever pull that up we then get the processor just gripping by the sides and it just it just literally just drops in don't force it at all it just drops in it'll only go in one way and as you can see there's a little uh, gold arrow there on the processor that aligns with that tiny arrow which is quite hard to see but it, there is a similar triangular arrow embossed on the plastic of the socket and then once we've got it in you just push this lever back down you'll feel it under tension as it sort of squeezes the processor a bit that way to make contact and that's it so just check that is in under there Mine has the the stop process comes with thermal compound on the bottom already. Um, but <clears throat> if you have to add your own, you can. There's, there's two methods to use on, on all the sites I've looked at online. Most seem to just put like a pea-sized blob of the thermal compound in the middle, and then put the processor on, and it oozes it out over the chip. I sort of tend to prefer that the method used by uh, Kerry Holzman and uh, other ones uh, where they spread it out with um, a nitrile glove or a piece of sellotape wrapped around your finger and just get a nice thin layer all over the, uh, the surface. But like I said, this, this processor, the cooler I'm using um, has it on the bottom already so I don't even need to put any on. But we are going to clean clean the top off any residues any um, where my finger may have touched or whatever I'm going to clean that off with uh, isopropyl alcohol um, so I'll do that now and just rub the top of the processor that's uh, there was absolutely nothing, nothing on that. So, because it is a brand new processor, that that's to be expected. Now, first of all, what we're going to have to do is remove these brackets. Uh, they're for a, a different type of uh, cooler. Some coolers just like clip under there, under them two lugs and tighten down some air coolers and some uh, water coolers um, but we're not going to need that on the, the stock Ryzen one so we'll just unscrew them so it's these four screws here just unscrew um, I'm not going to try this one-handed while holding my phone so uh, It'll just be on the overhead uh, webcam. As you can see, the uh, it does come with the thermal paste on it. It'd be nice if AMD put the 
put it so the logo would be at the top of the, the board but because the screws aren't screw spacing isn't square it's rectangular it's going to have to go to the left or the right now apologies at this stage of the build because there, there's no video for it I think I forgot to turn the the webcam when it was set up in its overhead uh, position I think I forgot to just turn it on you wouldn't really have seen anything on this the installation of the uh, the cooler to the CPU anyway because it's a two-handed job I would have only had the overhead shot uh, and my head would have been in the way anyway but basically it's very straightforward you just take off the two plastic bars that are on the motherboard uh, at the top and the bottom of the CPU socket uh, they're each held on with two bolts the black plastic with um, silver bolts two in each one these are used to hold different coolers they used to hold the water coolers and maybe some uh, stock air coolers as well but they're not used for the stock air cooler that comes with the Ryzen so you need to remove them first so just take them out just undo them two bolts and keep them like I say you will need them later if you uh, if you change coolers so put them to one side put them back in the motherboard box with the bolts and the back bracket at the back of the motherboard just stays in place you then just offer the complete uh, fan and uh, heatsink stock cooler down to the cpu there's already the thermal compound on on the back of the, the cooler so you don't need to put any on the CPU. You've already cleaned it with isopropyl alcohol. So you just offer that down to it and you, you just put the four screws in the four holes of the back bracket and tighten them down. It will only go one way up. They're not, equi space, uh, they're not equidistant, the spacing on them screws. It's not a square, it's an oblong. So you, you can only put it on the, the, the right way round so line up the four thing you've got to push against the spring and the spring is quite tight the springs on the screws they are quite tight so you'll have to push them in to get them started in the thread but just get a couple of threads in on the first one and then go over to the the diagonally opposite one and do that so tighten them left top left bottom left top right bottom right as you, as you would on a car cylinder head uh, so just put a couple of threads in on one, diagonally go over to the other, push down on the, take the tension off the spring by pushing down on the, the cooler, start it in the thread, get all four screws started and uh, then equally tighten them round uh, using diagonal screws. Keep doing that until it's a tight fit against the CPU. Uh, you, you, if you grab hold of the, the heat sink, you shouldn't be able to, without lots and lots of force, you shouldn't be able to twist it around at all. If you can move it around on the surface of the CPU, it's not tight enough. So tighten it down, reasonably tight, hand tighten maybe a half a turn more, and that should do it. Uh, don't overdo it, we don't want any thread stripping or motherboards cracking or anything like that. But as long as that cooler, you, you can't really move it with, with your hand, that, that would be fine. And it's this socket here. There's two. There's one. One, this one here, it's a CPU socket. And this one here, it's a CPU socket optional. So I'm presuming either one will do, but... Again, it'll only go one way this plug because there's like a groove so, now on this cooler there's also that little socket for the RGB Again, it's going to be hard one-handed this so i'm just going to plug the uh, the lead that comes with the cooler into there yeah, that's uh, that's that one and this lead 
That's a pretty long lead. So that one goes. There's quite a few um, RGB headers on this board. So I'm going to plug it into this one here. As you can see, there's four pins on there. That white one, just, just there. There are four pins on that. And as you can see, it says the, the extreme left one is plus 12 volts, then G, R, B, green, red, blue. So on the lead, there is an arrow. There. On the other side. So that arrow goes to the 12 volt side. So... Pushes on there like that. Obviously, this uh, this tangler cables, I'll be tie wrapping them together later. But that's it. That's on the socket there, and that's the CPU plugged in. Okay. Next stage is the uh, the memory. Okay. So uh, we'll put the memory in now. Um, I've got um, two 16 gig uh, kits. Each kit uh, consists of two 8 gigabyte um, strips. Um, the I've, I've been told it's better if you want to put 32 gig, just put two 16 gig strips in. It's just working on one uh, one of the, uh, the 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 grey channel or the black channel. Um, but they didn't have any 16 gig strip kits at a, a reasonable price. These were pretty cheap. They're um, for the Adata XPG Spectrex. They're uh, speed of 3000, water cooled. Like I said in the intro, I think that's probably a bit of a gimmick. Um, but I suppose if you heavily want to overclock them or whatever, it's a thing. And they are RGB, which is what I wanted. And each box, so each set of 16 gig, was £99 from eBay, which was a good price, a standard. Um, Standard non-RGB memory of the same speed was a tiny bit more than that at the time. So as of when I'm filming this, end of February 2019, and that's how much they were. So as you can see, they have... see the air bubble moving up and down there they have this water filled liquid filled thing on top whether it's a good idea to have liquid right on top of your motherboard I don't know but um, it doesn't seem to bother the AIO cooling guys so what the hell okay so memory is, is pretty easy to fit as you'll see the um, the bits on the bottom of it, that slot is not bang in the middle. It's further to one side than the other. And the same, that's where the slot goes. The left hand side is much shorter than the right hand side. So you can only get them in one way. These um, slots on this board, they're fixed at that end. That end doesn't move at all, but this end has got the catch on it. Some some circuit boards you'll find, some other boards you'll find. Have uh, their movable clips at both ends. So if you are just putting 16 gig in, you would put it in the two uh, black uh, lanes, or two grey lanes. Not too sure which, if you were just putting 16, 
whether it be better in the two black or better in the two uh, grey. I'll uh, look later in the book and uh, I'll put a I'll put a text on uh, on this screen, but it doesn't concern me because I'll be filling all all four lanes. So make sure it's the right way around. Make sure the clips on the right hand side there are swung fully back and the other side if they move as well. And it's dead easy, just it's easier with two hands. Don't know whether you heard them them clicks there. But When it goes properly in the slot and you push down both edges it does a definite click. Gonna be careful <coughs> Touch any of the any of the pins. And the last one. And the last one. So, so that's all, all four in. And if you check, all the clips are in. There was a definite click as each module went in. So that's all of them in together. And the next stage will be, I think, putting uh, the motherboard into the case. Okay, the, uh, the first thing to do in the case is to put in your I.O. panel. That's what it's called, input-output panel. This comes with your motherboard, and it's specific to each motherboard. Um, I like this one because it's black. And it's also got the, um, it's like a padding on the back. It's like a, a spongy, foily sort of padding. So, find out which way it goes round. It's going to be, obviously, that way around. Got to make sure it definitely goes in right. Otherwise, that's it. Otherwise, when you put the motherboard in, they won't quite line up. Just check it looks all right. Yeah, it seems. Yep, yeah, that's fine. The other thing to check is all the standoffs on the case, which are these. Check the line up with your motherboard if you put in the small um can't remember the small uh, motherboards in this is a full size atx one but if you put in the the mini atx is it mini itx whatever the smaller motherboards in you'll um you'll probably have to move these unscrew some of them and then screw them in a different position but this is as it all is, and there are nine corresponding, I've checked it, there are nine corresponding holes all in the right place on the motherboard. Yeah, so uh, another thing to check is that you're putting the right screws in, because the case comes with all these screws, and the threads in, in the standoffs there are a very, very fine thread. So... A lot of these screws are a lot coarser thread, or they look 
the right size and they don't quite fit so if they aren't going in smoothly um, they, it's the wrong thread so I found it was these tiniest ones here that uh, were the only ones with the right thread on and they've got like a little uh, little washer on the top so they're the ones I'm going to be using so while I put the motherboard in you're just going to have to uh, make do with the overhead camera I know I'll be obscuring it most of the time um, but uh, I don't want to try and put the, the motherboard in uh, while holding me, my phone in the other, other hand now the second bit of footage where I forgot to turn the overhead camera on is the fitting of the motherboard as before you're not missing much you would all you would have seen was the back of your head anyway because it is a two-handed job hence i got no uh, phone footage of it but basically you just um lay the motherboard in there just grab it by the the cooler which you've already attached to the processor uh, support the the board at the bottom as well offer it in maybe a, a, an angle into the into the case and uh, push the the back plate up against the I/O panel. All the holes should line up for the uh, the, the inputs to, to the sound and the USB sockets. Uh, you might have to push against it, give a bit a bit of tension to line up the holes in the motherboard with the spaces underneath. Um, but you shouldn't have to move it by by a lot so if you've just got to push towards the back of the case just against the springiness of the IO panel that's fine like I say make, make sure all the the holes are lined up with the gaps in it um, and then just start the nine screws in again just put one or two in first leave them quite loose and then put the other nine in like I say you shouldn't have to move move it much the the computer board just just a midge is just to line, line the screws up and make sure you're using the right screws again there's nine screws that come with the motherboard make sure you're using the right ones there are different threads some are coarse some are fine um, try it in in the spaces that are on, on the case and, and the studs that are already fitted to the case Try the screws in there first. Make sure you get the ones with the right threads, and uh, don't don't force the other ones in. They shouldn't go in really, really easy. And then again, just tighten them up, just snug tight. Doesn't have to be raunched in. As long as the motherboard is a snug and it's not going to come loose. That's it. Just do all nine screws up, and that's it. It's one of the uh, easier things to do in the build. We'll mount the power supply now. Um, I've got the case laying on its front. Um, this is uh, the power supply. It's uh, say a Seasonic Focus Gold. This little switch on the back you can uh, put it into like totally quiet mode so the fan doesn't even come on at all um, while it's not under load but if you want to test if your fan is working or whatever push that switch in and it will be on all the time um, on off switch as usual it's fully modular this um, most power supplies you'll get will have a big cable coming out here big bunch with all the cables on that the good thing about them is that um, you'll never forget any cables and leave them in a box or whatever or lose them if you're moving it to a new PC um, the bad thing about them is that you end up with loads of cables unused and trying to find a place for them in a particularly in a tight fitting case can be a bit awkward um, I prefer the modular ones. I keep all any spares in the original box, which I, I keep um, 
in the loft forever. If I do need a new ones in a new PC build, if I am swapping this power supply, which will be uh, very doubtful, <laughs> I'll never do this day in the original PC build. Um, I've always got access to them, and they take up a lot less room. So I got this. Um, this total build, like I said in the intro, will only need about 500, 550 watts. But this 650 watt one was um, only five pounds more than the 550 watt at the time. So I thought I might as well get it. And uh, being the, the gold. Focus Gold series, it does have a, a 10 year warranty, which is good. So, it goes with slightly unusual this case because usually they go in the case that fashion with the fan um, placed at the, at the bottom, sucking air up from the bottom of the computer and, and uh, blowing it out the back. But on this uh, Lian Lee case, it goes in sideways. So, just position it right. So, the outside bits to the outside, fan to the outside. So, that is how it goes. Is it egg? Of course, what I'm talking about, idiot. That's how it goes there. So I'll uh, I'll just put this put this down while I put the screws in. It's really good spec. This motherboard. It's got. It's a bit hard to see, but it's got eight blue USB 3.0 sockets, four USB 2 sockets. The two holes there are for the blanked off for the board that has the built in Wi Fi. I'm using a separate Wi Fi card, so um, that'll be fitted in one of these slots here. Uh, it's got these. USB 3.01, um, 3.1, I think they call that, and the uh, LAN supply, above the uh, LAN above there, like I say, I'm using Wi-Fi, and there's a USB-C socket there as well. Um, I like it when it's got still all the traditional audio uh, things, because my... Uh, my sound system has loads of inputs, but I do use them. And it's also got um, an optical Toslink output for something else as well. The sound system I use is, uh, is this. Absolutely love it. Uh, it sounds absolutely fantastic. Logitech, something or other. I can't remember. It sounds great. Okay, that's the power supply in. Okay, now the next bit is to um, connect the front panel wires to the motherboard. First of all, I'm going to put them... This is how they come from the case. You've got your power switch, your hard drive, LED, um, your power LED, and so on. And they all go on the motherboard, and they're all separate tiny, tiny little plugs. With this motherboard, and uh, a lot of others, you do get that plug there. And you can attach the cables to that, and then that goes on the motherboard. Why, you know, why all motherboards can't have all them bits, the, the, the reset switch, the power switch, the hard drive LEDs, the power LEDs, all in the same orientation, so that uh, case manufacturers could just put that plug on the end of the wires, it is beyond me. Um, if they just unified that, it'd be a lot better. You wouldn't have to start messing about with adapters 
Um, at least there is an adapter in this kit. So I'm going to put them on there now. I'll need both my hands to do it. Um, and then I'll be uh, plugging in some wires uh, to the motherboard. So, first of all, I know you're not going to be able to see this on the camera, but we've got the power switch. It doesn't matter which way around that goes. Because it's just a switch. There's no plus or minus on it. So just push that on there. Now the power LED, that's PLED. That's to say it's getting power. They're labelled plus and minus. It does matter which way around they go because an LED will only light up if it's connected the right way around. So obviously put the power LED minus to the PLED minus. God, so pig in awkward. Power, so just double check that. Power LED plus to PLED plus, yeah, minus to minus power switch. Flip the adapter over, and on the other side of the adapter, we've got hard drive hdd led so a hard disk drive led plus or minus uh, a reset switch um, now this case doesn't have a reset switch and nc um, there's only one pin on that don't know what nc means it's usually normally closed but um... now this on the hard disk drive led wire from the case it is just going to one one uh, one socket with plus or minus on it. The actual power switch on the other the power LED on the other side was one socket for plus and one for minus. So that's all of them on the uh, all of them attached to the plug now, and that goes directly onto the motherboard. Um, these other ones, again, be looking up in the book what they are a little bit. They'd be like to the uh, the USB sockets and things. These are the USB connection to the front. Um, there's another one here. That's the sound. HDD audio, so uh, we'll we'll look that up in front. Of where they go? Okay, so we've got that fitted on the um, that adapter on there, ready to plug on the motherboard, and we've got the cables through into their approximate positions. Obviously, just had to look at the uh, motherboard manual to to check, but this one here is the USB 3.1 connection so that will be to the little USB-C socket on the front of the panel and that that just plugs in there on the motherboard next one along Next one along is the, um, the adapter. And as you can see, it's got one blank and five pins on one side, four on the other. And that is, if you can see it there, it's a bit hard to me to get in. It's, it's this one here on the very end and again it's hard, it's hard to get the angle with this basic camera and light setup I've got but you can know you can just see the four pins one place and five the other so we'll just uh, plug that in now so that's that 
plugged in. Next one is this. This is the USB 3 socket. Um, last PC I, I built five years ago. This was blue. To show you, it was a USB 3 blue, but it's black on this, which I'm pleased about because the rest of the board is black. And that plugs in just again, trying to get this socket there. That one. See the little notch in the top that corresponds to the the notch on the top of the plug. So that just and the next one is this one, which is the um, the audio connected to the. The headphone and the microphone socket on the front of the panel. Um, pity they didn't cover it with a bit of black tape. That I'll do that later. I've not got OCD. Um, I don't give a toss which way the labels are facing on me jars of, and my cans of food in the cupboards. Um, but when it comes to uh, how a computer looks, yeah. Don't want to see any of them uh, horrible coloured cables, so I'll just wrap a bit of black insulating tape around there once, once it's all finished. That goes in here, the extreme left of the motherboard, just next to that shiny silver thing, extreme FX <laughs> chip or whatever. That's the socket that plugs in there. I've led this through uh, through a gap in the case. There, there's no um, no rubber grommet round here, like that there is on here. But the wire's not going to snag on anything, and uh, it looks a lot, a lot neater through that bottom socket there. Again, all these will be tidied up properly at the end of the build, but they're not looking too bad now. So that's all the uh, from the front panel. To the motherboard. And next, uh, I suppose, is uh, power supply wires, graphics card. We'll do the power supply wires. Okay, so we've um, I've shoved a few cables through. This is ready for the GPU, the uh, graphics card. So I'm just going to leave that there for now. Um, this is the this is the big uh, multi biggest pin plug on it. Main power supply. To the board that goes on that one on that three there this one here we? this one here goes see on it CPU it's split into two fours on this motherboard there is See there, an eight pin socket and a four pin socket. But all the cables that came with this power supply, and it is a good power supply, um, see Sonic Gold, there's only an eight pin one comes with it. But I've been reading up. It's very rare, and that's always running two graphics cards, which I'm not going to. In fact, you can't. I don't think you can uh, SLI the 
20 series cards. I never have anyway. But evidently you only need the extra 4 pin one if you're using it. a lot of uh, extra power. Massive overclocking and uh, two GPUs, which I'm not I'm not going to use. So should be fine with just that eight pin one. So we've turned the case around now. Uh, I've got the cables through, ready to plug in the power supply. And um, yeah, you guys will have noticed my mistake I was screwing the power supply in first before we've connected the cables anyway it's only four screws so there are the cables so we've got this one power supply unit that goes in there these two It's a bit hard for you to see this. I need both hands for this. That one there, and we have that one there. You can't get any of these wrong, I hope, because <laughs> um, they're all polarised the right way. Um, so these are the, uh, that's the PCI I wanted the That's the one. To that. These others are um, peripheral ones for the SATA. The so that's going to be the the hard disk drive and uh, any other SSD I might put in there. I'm not sure exactly what what's going in there so I'm gonna temporarily screw this back um, and then soon whip it out again just to uh, connect the just the SATA cables I want um, so I've got everything in there screws in I know I'm probably going the wrong way around about this um, read the SATA cables and that but it's, uh, it's literally a two a one minute job to take the power supply out again one of the screws there it is so I'm just going to tighten two of them diagonally I'll sort out what uh, I think I'm just having definitely having the Seagate spinny disk terabyte drive in and probably a uh, 
a Samsung 2.5 as well. As well as the M, M2. One. So, put that back down. So, get that as neat as we can. And we'll put the graphics card in. So, here we are. Here's the uh, graphics card to go in. There's no protector on the um, on the connections there. So I'm just going to see which slot or which back plates I have to take out. It's just going to be just this top one. No, of course, is it? It's a two slot, isn't it? I'm thinking it's obviously going to be that one and the one below it. Eventually, I want to put this card in the vertical position. This this case allows you to put the card like that as normal and also like that. Now I think it looks a lot better like that. You pay for all the lovely shrouds and designs on the fans and, and they're hidden you can't see them. Um, I know the cooling isn't as good in that direction, but like I said, I'm not into massive overclocking or anything like that. I'm hoping there won't be any cooling problems when I do it. That's for the future though. I'm going to be quite happy with it, just normal for now. And also the kit that Lian Lee sell is a crazy price. It's about it's about seventy quid or something like that, seventy UK pounds. Um. The whole case is only 115 from Curry's, which for a, a bent piece of metal and a, a cable seems extortionate to me. I know cooler, um, cooler, duh, whatever, <coughs> make one. Can't think of the name, cool, cool, Max, no, whatever, make one that is a bit cheaper, but again, seems a lot of money for, for what they are. So, for now, we're just going to mount it the normal method. So you line up the slots, which isn't, isn't easy to see. Make sure the clip thing is back. going to get me torch for this. I don't want to push it in the wrong uh, yeah, It's a lot easier seeing it from the top. So once it's lined up should just oh an idiot again. See so at least I'm doing this live showing you mistakes. It is a two slot one but I took the wrong one out. Should have turned this one out. So, pull that one back in. That's we're not checking properly. That's it, that's the right 
two. So I can make sure it's in. I know you what can't see with my big head in the way, but that's lined up perfectly now. Shove it in. Yep. That was a definite click, a clunk. And it's gone down all the way. two screws back in Okay, that's the uh, the graphics card in place. It's um, knowing which ones of these blanking plates to take out. It's a two-slot card. It takes up the space of two slots. I wrongly assumed it was going to be the top slot on the one below it, but it's not. It's the second one down and the third one down. So that's it, the back is nice and, and solid. And oh, we just now plug this remaining cable. So again, I'm, uh, <coughs> I'm going to use two hands on this. I'll just put this camera down. There is. Once you plug that in, as you'll know, that that plug is, is sort of like in two halves. The two end strips, you've got to sort of clip it together. They don't always want to line up. But that's in properly now. This one here, I'm assuming it's got to be just for uh, like that. That's what I mean. That's a separate clip that you have to sort of like line up. Um, this one would be for a second card um, but like I said I believe that you can't with the uh, RTX uh, 20 or maybe all the RTXs <coughs> to come but uh, you can't SLI them so you can't run two, two cards together so I never have tried that anyway um, but uh, so I'm not really bothered about that. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll put the fans in now. Now, again, I know a lot of folk will say when you see. I'll show you later which way I've put them in. A lot of folk will say I've uh, put them in the wrong way around. They just go in with these these fat dumpy screws you get with the kit. I bought the it's these fans. Where are we? Corsair LL120 RGB fans. They look really really nice. Well, I think they do. Like I said, it is an RGB build. If that's not your bag, I don't care. I love it. But I'm putting them in with the main sort of uh, effect ring facing towards the inside of the case so you can see it best. Now that means that it will be blowing air out of the case this way. 
so hot air out of the case. The consensus of opinion seems to be it should be blowing air in the case. But I did see a build on um, a great site BPS Customs BPS Customs great site for some absolutely gorgeous looking uh, water cooled um, specialised liquid cooled rigs um, what's the other one I missed out oh uh, Jay's Two Cents that's another gun and what else Tech Deals he does absolutely, he must spend his entire life uh, doing reviews and uh, comparison tests and benchmarks and that. But tons and tons of great info. So any of them sites I've just mentioned, but uh, that BPS Customs, there was a build in the same case as this, doing the fans the same way I am. And um, he said that it shouldn't make too much difference to the um, the temperatures might make a difference on uh, dust in the uh, in the pc but it's a pretty dust free environment this it's, it's my uh, man shed there's only me comes in it there's uh, nothing else done in the shed so it's pretty dust free and i, and I don't mind cleaning it regularly anyway um, I always have I've always kept all my PCs sort of spotless inside whenever they've needed it and uh, you'll never see any of them covered in dust once it's all up and running I'll be doing the usual sort of prime 95 temperature tests and things to see how everything runs if if anything is getting hot alarmingly hot i'll try these the other way around but I'll, I'll do that anyway um and i'll post the results um either once i've finished editing this uh, build or uh, or afterwards but i can't see it making too much difference whether it it blows hot air out or it sucks cold air in but <clears throat> We'll see. Because I'm not going to be uh, overclocking anything or anything like that to begin with. So it remains to be seen if, if it will make a difference. Okay, so that's the three fans in hopefully up up there i will once i can afford it be putting um an a i all-in-one water cooler on of course i do one with um all in white with white pipes that looks fantastic as well so uh i'll test it in all configurations but for now we're just going to be using the stock cork cooler and these fans um so nothing's being pushed so uh, hopefully we should be okay i've uh, i haven't a clue um how to wire these fans up yet i'll have to read through the little uh, bit you get with them you get all this the hub that you connect to your uh, your motherboard to control all the lights um connect them up to that one and uh, you get all this with with the kit so there's supposedly enough there to run on them and uh, and others and uh, there's even room on the bottom there although there's two hard drive trays there ssd drive trays there one i probably will be using so there's scope for putting them on the bottom as well unfortunately not on the back it's a pity that um if leanne lee they'd have just made it a midges wider it could have uh, had facility for one or two on the back as well but 
that's it um, I think for the build today it's uh, what time is it it's getting quarter to five it's time for a few pints and a quiz down at the North Houston in Fleetwood if you're into pub quizzes it's the, pl it's the place to go on a Sunday um, look out for me on TV soon there's a new quiz show coming on called um, Al Murray's Great British Pub Quiz on a TV channel called Quest it's going to be on Thursday nights if um, if you get a chance watch that we uh, we filmed it a couple of weeks ago um, and uh, I was on 15 to 1 last year, um, mad on pub quizzes, we go to 4 a week, but that's by the by. So uh, I'll carry on this stream, uh, this uh, <laughs> build, uh, probably tomorrow. See you soon. So the three uh, chassis fans have fed the uh, top fan there to this socket on the motherboard and in the book the motherboard book that is chassis number one chassis socket fan socket number one so I've done the top one to that one then fan number two is that one there Probably see just as fan number two there, and fan number three. Hard to get a shot of it, but basically, fan number three is that one there immediately to the left of the start button. So that's uh, top to bottom, I've numbered the fans 1, 2 and 3 and used fan headers on the motherboard 1, 2 and 3. Um, this is the, um, you get this with the pack of 3 fans. This here is the, uh, the fan hub where you can connect um, 6 fans to. And this is the, uh, the node, as they call it, which um, is controlled via USB. On the, on the motherboard and uh, once you've downloaded the software where this controls all, all the lighting on, on the fans so I've plugged them in um, top fan as number one middle fan as number two and the bottom fan as number three each of these the, the hub and the node each have their own uh, SATA supply so they'll be fed behind here Okay, now this is the uh, USB 2 uh, connection to the the node, the Corsair's uh, lighting controlling node. That plugs into the USB 2 header on the motherboard. Now it's at this stage you're going to have to decide whether to use Corsair's IQ uh, lighting control program, which you download from the site, or use your motherboard's own uh, controlling software on mine it's called Aura I've decided to use Corsair's IQ it looks pretty impressive and I will be adding two more fans later on so that's what I will be using of course if you used um, your motherboard's control software you would plug the RGB leads from the lamp from the fans straight onto the RGB headers of the motherboard so, this is the Wi-Fi adapter. Uh, I got this end of last year, and it's been in my existing computer since. Uh, it, my old wireless dongle didn't have uh, the AC protocol on it, and I just swapped uh, to new um, 
high speed ultra fiber on Sky, me ISP provider, and um, I wanted a compatible car to get maximum speed, maximum range. So I bought this end of last year. Uh, it's been great. It's too good to leave in the existing uh, computer that I'll be selling my daughter. So I'll just be putting the, the wireless dongle for her back in there, which works great. Um, but it was a shame to leave this in it. So uh, hence it goes in the new build. It's been working uh, really reliably and pretty fast connections. And I'm in a, a shed outside, so I've nowhere can run cables to the house. So I do rely on on Wi-Fi. Uh, there it is in place. It's got four uh, four connections, which lead up to four separate antenna on a magnetic base, which goes on top. And then the, uh, the NVMe drive just goes in like that and it sort of sticks up at a, it's got like a spring on it and then when you push it down, you put the screw in the hole. So there it is in place, just held in with the one screw. Still find it amazing how something that small uh, can be like 500 gig in size and have the uh, the speed that it does perform at, but uh, oh, that's progress. So this is the brand new uh, Western Digital Blue two terabyte hard drive. I'm just gonna use this for storing pictures, videos, music on. Uh, I decided to add it after the initial uh, part one of this uh, video the assembly of the components as you saw didn't contain this but uh, it was only 50 quid i thought why not for an extra two terabytes of storage i might be struggling with just the one terabyte um black hard drive when you point it in the caddies you must use these screws the tiny tiny bit of thread that sticks out the bottom will not penetrate anything deep into the hard drive if you use two long screws it's just going to uh, do damage to the hard drive. So be very careful to use the right ones through the rubber grommets. Also, uh, in the past, I have snapped off the uh, small bit of plastic um, here. Just that bit of plastic there uh, that holds the um, SATA cable in tight. Uh, it's very easy to do, especially if you like twisting it sideways and not trying to get it in, in the caddy into the case uh, you can snap that off and then it's a really loose fit for the SATA uh, cable and you might have to hot glue it in or something so be really careful um, with that they do go brittle particularly uh, after a few few years use um, this is when they usually snap it there's a bundle of cables behind here from the other drive or whatever so be very careful and there that's the two drives in one terabyte Western Digital Black, 2 terabyte, and Western Digital Blue uh, storage. I'll be putting games and applications on, on the black. Uh, that's the, uh, the uh, just the one of them installed. Both of them there, and the back panel just, uh, just getting screwed on. Now, my, my system drive out of my existing red PC that I sold my daughter was this Samsung one. I've decided to keep the Samsung one because I've got Samsung NVMe um, and this will match it and still use the Samsung Magician software. So I've put a brand new Kingston one in my daughter's and uh, all, all the uh, operating system and everything will be on that. And I've decided to keep this Samsung one. That's where it mounts. You can mount them in the in the front of the case where the, the motherboard can the everything goes on the base. But uh, there's also space for two in the back here on this uh, this vertical panel. So uh, it's best place for them, I think, um, out of sight there. And uh, that's that's where the it goes in in there behind. Um, it's an eight sixty drive ssd drive 250 gig so that basically concludes the build uh, everything's in it now it's just a matter of uh, 
putting the side panel back on I'm leaving the other panels off for now I'm just switching it on hoping no smoke comes out of it and then getting it all uh, tested and the operating system installed uh, and everything um, I'll be going into that in more detail at the end of this video so still a bit of a mess at the moment but that's, uh, that's a monitor so there it is this is all this is my other PC set up to sell my daughter that's my other one that controls the telescope so we're all ready to rock and roll with this one Weird how the uh, the lights on the motherboard come on with the power supply. Um, I'd prefer it if they didn't, if they only came on with the power switch. Well, Switched on and off twice then because we'd put a new NVMe drive in and the uh, and the other. I'll get better pictures of this once it's uh, all the doors are on it. So there it is, uh, the final build. It's always very pleasing when you first turn it on and there's no smoke emits from anywhere and luckily there wasn't. So it's all the side panels and uh, the front and the top back on. Uh, there's a, a bit of a video of it all firing up. I did leave the filter behind them fans off. Because it is blowing warm air out of... I've set them up uh, so for full visual effect, which is blowing the warm air out of the case. So I've left the filter behind off. There's no point in putting the filter there. There's no point in filtering air going back into the room so i've left that off because it's it's only acting as a restriction anyway so that's uh, that's it uh, as i mentioned before there's not going to be much difference air blowing out hot air blowing out or cool air being blown in and the fan at the top which i will be putting on with the aio cooler when i replace that the stock cooler will be drawing um cool air in from the room anyway and finally, uh, under torch light, uh, just shows up the motherboard a bit more clear. Uh, the cable management is done, all looking uh, reasonably neat. It's the uh, spoiled a bit, I suppose, by the red um, Wi Fi adapter at the bottom there, but not too bad. But really pleased with that. RAM looked good. The fans as well, they actually look uh, richer colour in real life uh, than on, under this light. And what's a one final look? Okay, that deserves a coffee, I think. Great. Yeah, it was great to uh, turn it on and have no smoke appear. That was about three weeks ago now. I've spent that time installing some games, uh, running some tests. So I wasn't expecting it to, to boot from that disc, but uh, miraculously it did. Um, everything was, was running tickety-boo. So what I did then was just uh, obviously tidy that disc up, put, put the uh, NVIDIA driver on, any network drives on, re-installed um, the BIOS. A new brand new motherboard BIOS from uh, the website, uh, and it, and it's all working great. I then cloned that um, 
two and a half inch SSD onto the M2 NVMe. With them both being Samsung, I used Samsung's uh, cloning app in Samsung Magician. Uh, I have got a Cronus, so I could have done it with a Cronus as well, or any any cloning software. But I thought I'd try a Samsung's out, and it worked worked a treat. It will only clone from a Samsung device to a Samsung device. A Cronus will clone from from anything to anything, basically. But I tried the Samsung one, and and it worked a treat. So it was all up and running then on the M2 disc. I um, then formatted the Samsung two and a half inch SSD and that remains in the computer blank. Uh, I'll probably use that as uh, another backup device for the C drive. Um, I do regular backups anyway to an external hard drive, but I might use that as, uh, as a backup for that as well. So then with me daughter's, uh, the computer that was going to me daughter, uh, I'd previously cloned the Samsung disk for that onto a new Kingston SSD. So she uh, she ended up with that. And again, it's the same operating system. So basically I had to buy a new license, was fully prepared to, um, but it, it works and it, it comes up as digitally authorized and, and, it, and it's working fine so yeah i enjoyed the build i would have recommend that case to anybody it's a gorgeous case to build in it's a gorgeous case to look at and it's a great case to build in tons of room inside uh, you can fit a full size uh, atx board in no problem at all there's loads of space at the top for the aio cooler or a three fan AIO cooler down the right hand side if you want. Um, loads of configurations, space for two uh, full size spinny disk type hard drives and four SSDs. Uh, so, so tons of storage space inside and loads of uh, cable management in the back in the, in the side panel where the power supply goes. Um, yeah, really, really recommend it. I've thoroughly enjoyed the build. And, and it's running fantastic. I am going to do a part three, uh, another video, final video in this series, part three, on just swapping out the stock Ryzen fan cooler with a new Corsair um, all-in-one water cooler. Uh, reasons for doing this, uh, I'll give in the video. Uh, suffice to say, it's it's run great, the, but when you're really pushing the CPU under some of the stress testing software, it was getting very, very hot. Uh, like I said, I'll go into all the figures, I'll have charts for them in the next uh, part three video. It'll be a much shorter video. Yeah, basically, all it's going to concern is stock swapping them coolers and showing you some of the results I'm getting with the computer with a, a couple of uh, benchmarks and, and some games. So I hope so far you've enjoyed the build. I know it's been a bit drawn out, uh, what, an hour and 25 minutes long, something like that. But I have tried to, to be as thorough as possible and most of it is done in real time. So it shows you how actually uh, sort of quick you can make a computer obviously quite a bit is edited out but it's it's a thing you can do you know in in three or four hours no problem whatsoever so if uh, if you've enjoyed this video and it's been of any use to you please click like uh, also uh, click the subscribe button by all means it's a brand new channel as i've just started hopefully i've retired now so i've no excuse not to have plenty of spare time on my hands Hopefully, I can keep adding other little bits of uh, stuff to it. I am a bit of a, a gadget freak. I do love my gadgets. So um, whenever I get one, I'll do a bit of an unboxing. I've got a couple of things I've got planned. Um, if you want to know how to stop your CCTV camera, dome cameras misting up in the rain uh, and uh, ob totally obscuring the, the view at night time uh, in the rain, I'll be doing a video on that. 
Also, I'll be giving you a guide of this man shed I'm in. Uh, I built this last year, about a year ago. Um, extended my existing very small man shed stroke observatory. I still have the observatory. It's at the back through that door there with the clock on. I've uh, got uh, a nice uh, telescope mount in there and some nice scopes on it and a slide back roof. Uh, so one of my hobbies is um, astrophotography. Not done any for a while. Uh, been too busy messing about with other stuff. Um, but uh, I can I can show you a guide round the scopes and, and go through that. Um, but I'm a long a lifelong aero modeler, uh, radio control, starting off with single channel stuff. So ho um, hopefully we'll be doing that. I'm a member of Fleetwood Model Flying Club. Uh, I plan on again going down to the to there a lot more this summer than last year. So I've got a lot of things in the pipeline. And whenever I can, I'll try and do a, a little video and add it to this channel if it's of interest. Okay, if not, so what? Um, so feel free to subscribe, and uh, whenever I can do one of them, I'll I'll put it up. So keep an eye open uh, on this channel for that. I hope to have it uploaded as soon as I possibly can, and I'm hoping you'll join me for it, and we'll finish off this uh, trilogy on this PC build. See you soon.